I'd like to call the meeting to order. Are you order? Okay. All right. Uh, we'll call the Conway Grammar School Committee meeting, uh, school committee meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. And um, you're going to open the public hearing on the budget. Oh. Sounds good. I'll start by opening the public hearing for the proposed fiscal year uh, 2023 budget. Thank you, Michael. And I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay. Uh, we've gone through this several times, and I know uh, many of you understand this process fully, but I thought since this is our public hearing, I would go quickly through what the budget process looks like from, from start to end and how we get to our end number. Um, so our first priority is setting a needs-based student-centered budget while being fiscally responsible. So there is input collected from principals, uh, and other administrators, directors of departments such as IT, facilities, special education. Everyone comes together and makes recommendations uh, on what new initiatives might be for the upcoming year or existing uh, programs and staffing that are in place. So we take that hybrid approach to make sure that we're looking at level services and carrying over all existing staffing and programs while also taking a look at what needs to be added for the future. Uh, so we also look at existing expense accounts. So non-salary expenditures, we look at those very closely to make sure that we have been funding those lines properly. So anything from uh, technology to building fuel to supplies and materials, uh, we look at all of those pieces and adjust accounts up or down depending on how our spending has gone over the past three fiscal years. We also build in wage adjustments for contract and non-contractual wage allocations. So uh, Union 38 was in negotiations when the budget process started this year. So we had put in a placeholder number for IAs and teachers based on uh, where we hoped the contract would end. Uh, and then we put in an adjustment for support staff and administrative and central staff. So custodial staff, cafeteria, office staff, principal, and anyone in central office, there are wage placeholders built in for those folks as well, even though they're not on contracts. Uh, so one of our biggest challenges, especially in a small school with a small budget like Conway, is being able to uh, meet the existing needs while also seeing what we can do to enhance the school in the future. So looking at new requests and new priorities. Uh, and then we have to consider other budget drivers like special education expenses and uh, our revolving funds. So special education costs at Conway are pretty consistent because Conway has a really strong special education program. So fortunately, we don't have to um, send students out of district. We don't have to uh, deal with incredible uh, transportation costs that are associated with that. Um, we may still bring in contractors or outside providers, but for the most part, we're able to provide those special education needs in-house. So that helps us keep the Conway budget um, relatively stable, stable in that regard. And then we look at revolving funds. For Conway, that is an early childhood, a school lunch, a special education, and then our school choice account. So we make sure that the revenues we're projecting to come in can continue to carry the expenditures that have been paid in the prior year and also see if we have to add anything on. So going into the first draft of the budget, which was presented in January, we came in at an incredibly high uh, increase. It was 9.43%. Oh, Kristen, you're copying for the notes. <laughs> it's coming up on the screen. That's okay. <laughs> no worries. I'm so sorry. I'll get out of this. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so the nine point, that's what happens when we have live documents that we're working in, right? It's good and bad. Um, so 9.43% is incredibly high, especially for a small school like Conway. And one of the driving factors here was our retirement factor. So the contract is built in with a separation agreement for a sick buyback for retiring teachers and IAs, although their amounts are different, they both have that built into their contracts. And we are looking at in Conway $120,000 separation expense next year. This is significantly higher than it has been in the past. Um, in the prior year, we held about 25,000, I believe, in school choice to cover this expenditure. 
Um, and in prior years, it's maybe been right around that amount because we factor maybe there's going to be one teacher that retires. Well, Conway is seeing several people between last year and then getting in their retirement notice in time to retire at the end of this year to be paid out in July. So that was almost 6% uh, budget increase right there that we were faced against. There really are no other major new initiatives in this budget. Uh, the factors driving it up outside of that 120,000 included some small increases for supplies. So general supplies, nursing supplies, and custodial supplies based on prior usage, as well as an increase to our technology lines, which we're seeing district-wide that we are over budget for several years in those technology accounts. And it's primarily software related. So programs that we've added to support curriculum or networking, um, such as Parent Square, which is our um, sort of robocall system that sends out our emails and text alerts. So those pieces have changed or been added over the years. And so we've, we've increased funds there. And when I say a minor increase, I'm talking about less than 1%, so less than $20,000 to those few lines that we made adjustments based on actual expenditures. So there's really not a lot of new initiatives in this budget. Uh, again, the cost of living adjustment for wages, and then those small factors, and then that 120,000. So school committee made a decision at that point to request that the town cover those employee separation costs for us under a special warrant article at a town meeting. Uh, the town, I believe, has decided to use ARPA funds to support us instead of putting that through town meeting on a warrant. And we are very grateful for that because it means that the town does not have to carry that expenditure. And then also it comes off of the school um, with use of the ARPA funds. So that brought our budget down to, uh, we took about 6% off and then we looked at reducing one instructional assistant position. And that is because we have a student who uh, has a one-to-one -one IA and the student is aging out of the program and leaving the district. And that position, um, we did have a vacancy, so we don't have to actually let anyone go. Uh, there is a vacant position currently, so we'll just shift things around, eliminate that one role, and then moving forward, um, make adjustments if needed if something else comes up for one-to-one -one needs. So that was our second draft presented in February. Uh, no additional changes were recommended by school committee at that time, so we are presenting the final draft of the budget tonight at 2.96% for a total general fund of $2,086,307. And then we will use another uh, roughly 670, uh, 670,000 in revolving funds, grant money and school choice funds to fully fund the operating budget. Um, I'm happy to take questions if anyone has them, but I'll also just put up some historical info here so you can see over the last several fiscal years where our, our increases have been. Uh, so the, the number we're at under 3% at this point, 2.96, is less than last year. Last year's increase did include some new initiatives. Um, I believe we increased summer programming. We may have even added, I believe, Kristen, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, an interventionist for, I think, academic support, if I'm remembering correctly. So that was why our increase was significant last year. Otherwise, you know, we re remain pretty consistent, not going over that three and a half percent and and some years much less. Uh, the enrollment data shows that Conway's numbers are coming up. You can see a significant jump from 20 to 21, and that is in residents as well as school choice students. So that's positive that we're seeing our enrollment bounce back and even grow to uh, above pre-pandemic numbers. So that's good news for us. And I'm not going to go through all of these accounts, but I will just put them here on the screen since we are talking about some other funding sources. As I said, early childhood, school lunch, special education, and then school choice are our revolving funds that help offset the budget so that we do not have to come in with significant increases. Um, so all of our funds are in great shape. Uh, I think school lunch, uh, especially Phil, you'll be happy to see that we are projecting currently a positive balance at the end of next year, something that Conway, I don't believe, has ever had, <laughs> um, especially at $30,000. And that is in part because we have used ESSER funding to help offset our wages and other expenditures in the current year so we could build up our reserves. Uh, we will have to be mindful because it does look like USDA free lunch for all students is going to end. Congress did not include any funding to continue universal free meals for students moving forward. 
could still change, I suppose, but that what that means is that instead of everyone receiving free lunch or breakfast and us getting reimbursed from the federal level, we will have our, our existing model, pre-existing model of free and reduced lunch students who qualify and then cash paying students as well as cash paying faculty and staff. So it could change things a little bit. Um, it's it's still too early, but I, I feel pretty confident in that revenue number, even based on pre-pandemic numbers. Um, and we'll have to work to keep expenditures down or at least look in the, in the future of how we're gonna continue to fund that account. Um, the only other thing that I'll note with school choice here, this is a significant positive balance that we're projecting for Conway next year. This is higher than it's been in quite some time. And that is because we have been able to build the fund up over the last few years due to tight um, budgets that, you know, we, we kept our spending down to a minimum, took advantage of any COVID code funding that we received last year. So we were able to build up some savings. Uh, we also have some savings in the current year already from the school choice expenditures that the, the expenses projected are down compared to when we built the budget last year. So I'm really pleased with that 550 roughly thousand that we have in there. Uh, this is a safety net for the school that there is anything uh, unforeseen, say we did need to add an IA as a one-to-one -one unexpected throughout the year, or uh, while Conway does have the stabilization fund for capital needs, um, Phil did bring up that that fund is dwindling and needs to be replenished. So if we did have a boiler issue, we have great reserves. And, and the reason I bring up the boiler is that we do have two schools in district this year that have had emergency boiler repairs. Uh, <laughs> currently do not have boilers, both boilers, both both schools have a backup, but um, Sunderland has a boiler down and Frontier has a boiler down. So talk about, you know, unexpected, very costly expenditure. So it's great that we have this balance in there. So it also gives us that cushion if school lunch or early childhood, um, for example, were to have some struggles with enrollment or high expenditures. So um, just give you a little bit of history there, probably more than we needed to talk about, but uh, we will vote on the exact number a little bit later, and I'm happy to take questions if anyone has them. Well, not so much a question, but just... Nope, sorry, go ahead. Um, just, just, oh, go ahead, no, go ahead. You can. Oh, I was just gonna say, I don't have any questions, very thorough, uh, read through the whole budget, and appreciate all the, the, the communication and clarity along the way, so no questions. Yeah, I don't really have quite just a couple observations for first the silver lining silver lining of COVID for the town of Conway was ARPA and um, the that 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 money is available and that the select board unanimously supports the staff in the school to the extent that they're willing to put that money into this budget. I think when, when uh, you know, I, I presented th this budget tentatively to the finance committee and the select board on Monday because it was on the calendar. That's the day to do it. And I've been doing it for that, that for the school committee for like six years. And um, it was the unanimous impression of everybody that if ARPA wasn't there, that this budget would have had real trouble because that number for that benefit for sick pay buyback is so out of line to what every other school in the state does that every other school has it, that benefit capped so like 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 the policy that we have now for new hires for the past started that started three years ago um that that benefit is capped at like 2500 and um that we have these twenty thousand dollar payments to each person is a, is a very 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 out outlier type generous thing and um it's so out there that everybody that hears about it gets objects to it <laughs> everybody um and it's um we're like this hopefully that there won't be more than one uh, for a few years now now that um as i see it mathematically it's going to be pretty hard for there to be more than one or two for the next few years but uh um it's just you know for the next 17 years this is just something they're always going to have to watch for that these this is like a landmine in our budget process and if we're ever really faced with something like this in the future and there's nothing around to offset it this budget's in trouble so um you know but but the flip side of that is that there was something around for it so um and it's really the the result is that the finance committee unanimously 
thought that this was a great budget and they just said send along send along their their regards and thanks and um you know this is the whatever so this is a good budget for the town it's going to go good at town meeting it, um but yeah and 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 the for as far as the capital stabilization fund so i'm now the last person on the school committee that was around when we started that and that was a co a co-effort by then chair jan warner and myself and jan is now the town treasurer so this has always been sort of one of her babies that she's always looked out for and um she let me know that the balance she thought the balance was low that it's fifty nine thousand right now and the intent for the intent always was to be at 125,000 because that's the that was the maximum worst case scenario for a boiler repair. And the idea was that the money would be there so that we don't have to close the school because otherwise that would be a close the school kind of event if it's the middle of winter. So um, so we won't have to do that, but we are going to have to add something into that. And we don't know what the town's revenue situation is yet. So we don't know what the town can add to that. And that's the town does that, not the school committee, but uh, we are the only, uh, the only one of the four elementary schools with a stabilization fund. And again, so to take a moment to just appreciate right now, how good we got it. These are the salad days. So um, it's only downhill from here. <laughs> oh no. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'll say, I appreciate your, historical perspective on this because you know i'm i've been on the committee for a couple of years a few years but um still feel very new uh compared to the uh experience of some of the other people so thank you for sharing all that shelly thank you so much for this very um detail oriented and uh well put together presentation and the budget itself thank you so much um the only yeah. thing is, Michael. The only thing is, Michael, that we're not we're not putting in any of the capital requests for the grammar school itself. And the feeling was that from the finance committee and the select board and everybody else involved with the town budget this cycle, that this would be a good year to do that. And um, you know, and I there, there was a few there's a few easy easy ones easy pickings that I think would go over real well and. This is, this is the year to do it. This is a year that would be good to do it. Next year might not be good. Um, so, well, so, I don't yeah. know. If we, I don't think we have a capital update on the agenda, do we, Darius? But this is sort of one of those things that's unfinished business that maybe we should have had on there because we did submit a few things to Veronique um, more for consideration under ARPA before the employee separation costs were approved. And so right. she still has some capital requests from us, but I don't think that this committee officially decided one way or the other what to do about capital. And maybe we still have time because the Conway meeting is not till June, right? For town meeting. Right. right. Correct. Yeah, you're right. Shelley. We discussed that the, uh, at the time, we thought we were going to be putting a warrant on for the 120, and that we were going to do any capital projects if we were asking for 120. And it's free cash, so to speak. Uh, but now they have ARPA funds instead. You know, we can see what the appetite is to do something different. Oh, it's yeah. I mean, appetite is based on the revenue, and the th the feeling is that this would be that this is a good year, a good year to knock off a few of those items. So. Um, and when the finance committee says that, then I'll pass that. I pass that along. So, so uh, Phil, when does uh, the warrant actually go out? Can we wait until the May meeting to talk about this again, or is that too late? Um, that's probably too late. Actually, yeah. I know. I know. Veronique and I are meeting for an hour tomorrow and a couple hours on Monday to draft all the all the um, all the all, all the non budget warrants um the art the there's there's a bunch of special requests and everything so um i think i think that would be too late actually um so i, I don't know I, I i would say we could we've talked about it before it's still under the budget it's still under the general budget thing i think we should be able to 
think uh, I don't know. You could you could interpret the rules so that we could vote on it. I think can we? I would say so. I would say so. I'm it's it's listed on the agenda. As, hey, I'm, not on the about agenda. The, I'm not concerned about the agenda, Phil. I'm concerned about our priority list that we have for capital needs and. All I'll share our screen right now, my screen, with the, you know, um, you see that? Can you folks see that? Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, the green is, um, the area of which we were proposing for FY23, as you can see over here. Um, and so we have projects in place to move forward. Um, yeah, and, 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 you and you do have um, a couple of town residents loudly beating the drum for the dishwasher, by the way. <laughs> it's amazing how many times I've heard that. Uh, you know, so basically looking at our list here, I mean, it's very clear what the, the next three items are. And I think you should, I can um, send this to you. Whoops. Um, I can send this to you and we can, uh, you can go ahead and have a conversation with about it on that end. I don't think it's going to need a special vote. Um, Good. I think we've discussed Good. that list and we didn't hold back unless you feel like we need to do it. Yeah. I think you go ahead and have a conversation, but then if we have to affirm it to move it forward for, by the school committee, okay. we can just do that. We can do that in the main meeting. If we have to do a special meeting, it takes 15 minutes. We can do that real quick, too. All right. I, I would go ahead and start talking about those numbers. All right. Good. I will. Thanks. All right. Thank you for bringing that to the uh, to the meeting. I appreciate it. Um. Next line item is review and approve the minutes from February 10th, 2022. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Hey, hey, Michael, just said, just part of order. Is there, yeah. you gotta confirm there's no other public that want to comment and then you gotta close the public hearing and open the regular business. Sorry, it's just the, it's like um, the one, one legal thing you gotta do right this year. Is the yeah. And <laughs> there we go. Um, so, do we need to vote, uh, like a roll call vote, to close the public hearing? No. No. Nope, you just just uh, oh, all right. So, uh, with those presentations and the comments we made, I'm going to close the public hearing for the proposed FY23 budget. Um, our next. Item is to review and approve the minutes of February 10th, 2022. Uh, we got the minutes in our packet. Um, do I? Is there any uh, discussion about the minutes or a motion to approve? Excellent. I'll move to approve. I have a second. Thank you. Um, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Phil? Yes. Jared? Yes. And Michael, yes. Uh, next line item is the financial statement and the warrants. Okay, so eight warrants were reviewed and signed electronically. The total was $40,102.77. I did send out the expense reports. I'm happy to take questions if you have any. There's nothing major uh, to report on right now. Uh, most of the things that we've talked about, you know, overages in transportation, uh, we know are coming because of the COLA adjustment on the contract. Uh, there's also a fuel adjustment clause in the contract. So with the price of fuel right now, we are seeing uh, the February and the March bill, we did owe additional money for uh, cost adjustment on the fuel. Uh, so we are going to see overages in that. Um, there's some other minor account overages here and there throughout the report, uh, and I can take specific questions if you have them. The one other thing I will note quickly is that 
the question is coming up about uh, utilities. So heating fuel, especially, you know, where's where's our budget going to look like at the end of the year? Conway still has a decent amount in the budget. There's about seven thousand dollars remaining in that heating fuel line. Um, I have Michelle, who is our accounts payable specialist for the Union 38 schools. I have her analyzing uh, each of the schools. So Conway and Sunderland are on oil. So I have her looking to see when our last Phillips were, how much gallons we've used, because uh, we do lock in a rate for a certain amount of gallons per year, which I think in Conway is 8,000. And I believe Bruce reported to Bill that we're over that. So what happens is we start switching to the market rate when that happens. So um, but I, I think 7,000 is still a safe number given that we're out of heating season and, and we likely maybe will have one more fill up, if anything, before the end of the year. Um, and there's still a, a decent amount of the budget to be spent. We do expect that we will spend it. There may be some savings on accounts here or there, but we have about um, 190,000 remaining left in the budget to get us through the rest of the year. So um, no major concerns. That's it. Thank you. Uh, next item is the principal's report. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Uh, I, I um, provided everyone with an update for our school improvement plan. So we like to do that a couple of times a year, give the school committee an update as to where we are with our goals and our activities. Um, the four main focus goals are social emotional learning, which actually um, became number one this year. Typically, it follows instructional practice, but with COVID and all the um, sort of trauma and experiences that the students have had, um, that move to our top priority. Instructional practice being our, this, another priority, anti-racism, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and then family community engagement and communication. Um, make, we're making progress on all of the goals. It's hard to say achieved on many of them because we're just, Flip many of them over until next year. The activities will change. Our goal is to achieve the specific activities that we have within the plan, um, but we're making good progress. The, the CGS team has been working very, very hard this year, as they do every year, but um, you know, just many more challenges this year um, with our social emotional needs and um, with COVID. So, um, very pleased with the. Um, the academic uh, gap closing that we've seen this year and um, definitely providing much support for students who are in need of social emotional assistance, which varies actually week to week and day to day. So, um, so that's our, that's the update. Does anybody have any questions for me? Nope. Great. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. All right. Um, next line item on the agenda is public comment. Was there any public comment submitted? No. Okay. Uh, so moving on. Uh, next item is unfinished business COVID-19 update. I'm just reporting, and, and Kristen, I'll ask you to jump in in 20 seconds, get your thoughts together. But, you know, we started the uh, mask optional on Monday. And um, you know, I said a quick note out to the school committee about it, but um, each school is kind of adjusting um, to that. And our COVID cases in the district, um, we've had one in the district, not in Conway, today. But prior to that, I think we had about seven days straight without a uh, reporting of a case and it includes two rounds of pool testing. So um, the numbers have gone the direction we wanted it to go to um, go to this next um, next stage in our dealing with COVID. So Chris, you want to talk a little bit about, about you know, how this community reacted to what you saw? Can I go? Yeah, great. Thanks. So um, we have, uh, this is approximate rounding up, rounding down, uh, approximately 85% of our students are unmasked at this time and approximately 15% are masked. Um, the, I know at the last school committee meeting, the joint school committee meeting, there were some comments and concerns about how students would react with um, some students being masked and some students being unmasked. Um, children never cease to amaze me. Um, 
not only has it been a um, very smooth transition, they 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 have even gone above and beyond. So we have some students who, if they have a friend or a peer who is masking, if they're working on a small group, we've seen incidences where the the other child will put on a mask um, just to be respectful for the peer who is masked um, or ask um, if they would feel comfortable with their mask. So we've seen some some remarkable um, children throughout this process. Uh, so the transition has gone very smoothly. Um, we're supporting all students and staff, masked or unmasked. And um, so I, I just know that that was one big fear. In terms of uh, staff members policing, um, we've only really had one incident where I've just had to call a parent because, um, you know, just needed a little conversation to remind the student about wearing a mask. That happened very easily, very quickly, and um, we're settling into our place. Um, of the 15% of the children who are masked, I'd say about half of those families are waiting um, until April 1st or two weeks after we started the unmasking. Um, and then uh, they're gonna, the plan for those parents is to email us and the hope is that from those families that they will um, have those children unmasked as well. So going very well. That's great to hear. Yeah, I think that, uh, we have a wonderful community, and the way we support each other is awesome. Yeah. In the fear of the unknown, so during those comments, right, where, where people were worried about how it was going to work and the policing, I think you know, it's good to hear that there, there's no issues to date. You know, keep us informed, obviously. Yeah. I sure will. Thank you for yeah. All right, on to new business. Uh, FY23 pr proposed budget. We're going to vote a final budget. Um, there is, before we vote, uh, is there any space for additional comments or do we uh, just move? You know, do I entertain a motion, basically? Yep, you entertain a motion. You give a second. All right. And then you vote, and then you can you can discuss it further at that time. Is that first a second on the current budget, and then if someone wants to discuss the budget, you can, or you can wait to a vote. Since we've been discussing all along, you'd be most of the straight to the vote would, would not yeah. be my second Friday. Well, I'll make a motion to vote on the budget. I, I, just you know, Michael, just to answer your question more directly, though, as as the acting chair, you have the discretion to rearrange the agenda and to repeat an item on the agenda. Um, Etc. So you could you you had the power to do whatever you wanted right there. All this time, I had all the power. <laughs> you, you did. You did. <laughs> Thanks, Will. All right. Uh, so entertaining a motion uh, for the proposed budget vote. Yeah, I did make the motion to take a vote on the upcoming there, budget. Is there a second? Yes. Thank you. Uh, roll call, Jared. Yes. Phil? Yes. And Michael, yes. Right. The language of that the language of that motion was to enter was to vote on the budget though. So now we have to vote on the budget. Oh, I see what you're saying. So uh, okay. uh, move, move to approve the budget. Move to approve the budget. I second. So, so all right. motion. Yeah. If Phil's going to make you do it correctly, you have to actually say what the budget number is. Correct. Part of the motion. I think that's uh, what I was trying to say. So that's, why you message, that's why you messaged that. I would like to make a motion to approve the budget of $2,086,307. Second. All right. With the, with the motion and a second, uh, roll call vote. Jared. Yes. Phil? Yes. <clears throat> Michael, yes. Yeah. Well, we at Conway oh, Grammar we're... School, thank you very much. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Very welcome. All right. Um, 
Next item of new business, April Joint School Committee meeting. Yep, just a reminder that our next meeting is a joint meeting. It's been released the April, was it the 6th? That's the 6th. Yeah, one of those days. Um, I can't see across the room. I'm getting old. Um, it's the 5th. It's a joint meeting, and that's where we do a lot of our... Um, We'll hear from uh, Romney Associates regarding our anti-racism and equity work, and so we can hear from our consultants themselves if they have questions regarding our work where we're at. Um, we also will propose next year's school calendar, as well as some of the PD planning. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff that we've been um, not talking a lot about as we've been doing a lot of budget and COVID stuff. So it'll be a big meeting there, but we we'll do it all at once too, so we don't do it five times with all the extra people who. Are part of those meetings virtual or in person Darius um, it's gonna be a hybrid meeting so you can go virtually or in person the in-person part will be a frontier and um, you can choose to do that well I for one am looking forward to the return of regular order in our joint meetings and the end of joint meetings where the subject is mask mandates um, because those joint meetings, I, I can, I'm okay if we don't have any more of those. Second, ready, <laughs> ready to move, ready to move on. All right. <laughs> um, and uh, reports. So uh, Elaine's not here, uh, and I don't have a report. Um, uh, and um, Denise is not here, so we don't have a collaborative report. Uh, Darius, other items? Yeah, the only update I have um, is that, so, you know, we do have a tentative agreement with the association. Right now, we're kind of going back and forth, um, making the minor edits, and then they will bring it to their, to the teachers and the IAs for their approval, and then it'll come back to you folks for you to look at. So, um, I don't think we have to go to executive session tonight. We can discuss it that. If you want to discuss it, um, when we have that uh, meeting in right now, I'm probably going to schedule that to happen at the May meetings. Um, it'll probably be ready sometime probably in early April, but um, it'll be a lot easier trying to do that at the joint meeting, I'm trying to keep things off the joint meeting because of, of the chaos of it, a really informational base um, and so forth. So that's where we are with that. Sounds good. All right. All right. Uh, well, without any other items other than adjournment, uh, I would entertain them to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 All right. One last roll call vote. All right. Yeah. Uh, Phil. Yes. Good. Yes. And Michael. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Uh, appreciate all the information and the camaraderie. Thanks, Phil, for helping out, too.